hi guys so quick disclaimer this video um, doesn't necessarily reflect the kind of pain I was in when I was um, when I had you know COVID um, you know my wig really covered everything <laughs> like if you had seen me in reality it was a mess I was a mess you know I was in a lot of pain and I'm sure you don't expect me to start recording when I'm pooing or when I stand up and I see poo on the floor or when I am when I'm throwing up or anything like that obviously I was also isolated you know alone so I couldn't necessarily um, record all those parts and I don't think it's necessary anyway um also someone also asked me how do I think I got it I think I got it through one of my nannies um you know she was feeling a bit ill in in May and for some reason I suspected it was COVID so we literally isolated her and we gave her some meds but um, at that point in time I don't even know why it didn't click to me to call anyone to come and do the test but we we eventually spoke to a doctor and we gave her the covid meds even though she hadn't gotten tested and after some time after about a week she got better so she you know came out of isolation and shortly after that i got tested for um i got tested positive i started feeling ill and all of that um but yeah she's feeling better i'm feeling better but i just wanted to say that you know i think she must have gotten it from either one of the corners corner shops you know in lekki just you know when you just quickly say oh quickly go to i don't want to mention the stores so that you know it doesn't people don't stop going there but oh quickly go and help me buy this from here quickly go and buy that from there and the funny thing was she wore her mask she wore a shield she was very educated she was an educated nanny so i know she didn't take things for granted she also had gloves and all of that so um my advice is just limit your um when you when you tell your staff to go out if if possible just try to go and buy the things that you need by yourself because i'm sure you know that you'd be extremely careful so that it doesn't come to meet you at home when you know you're trying to be careful you have everything you have lysol you have clorox you have sanitizers you have all kinds of things but you know it will still come and meet you at home so just try to be careful so like i said this video doesn't really reflect the pain i was in it was horrible it was horrific but i tried to um record um a few like every three days or something just so that um, i could give updates on how i was feeling on each day and all of that so happy viewing thank you Hi everyone, my name is Ifedra Simietti. So about, I think a week ago, I started feeling weird, you know, I started feeling, you know, tired and, and all of that. So I went to my hospital, I was, I had like a serious, severe headache. So uh, while I was there, you know, they gave me, they gave me some meds. I can't even remember. I think they just gave me paracetamol and and um, an antibiotic they said i had a bacterial infection so they gave me the antibiotics and paracetamol so i came home by the time i was at home hmm, i thought i was going to die like my head was pounding my fever now shut up yes, my fever was so high i was i was i was like ah, god where is this one coming from you know it was it was it was so high super high i took the paracetamol to the antibiotics they gave me nothing was coming down i was confused I, I, told my I, said, I don't understand i'm feeling so uncomfortable i can't sleep i can't do anything i can't think straight so um i said you know what i'm going to go back to the hospital so i was like i don't know if they're going to admit me at the hospital but i'm going back this was 12 midnight because i could i, I was in so much pain and i went to the hospital my driver drove me at this point in time i had to call my mom because we needed like at least two adults in the house with my nanny with them with the kids so they admitted me when i got to the hospital guys there's nothing they didn't give me at the hospital so they gave me they had to put me on like the iv so they started giving me um paracetamol they i think they also gave me antibiotics i can't even remember so the person wasn't working so i started feeling pains in my legs i couldn't stand i couldn't do anything and i was like ah. <laughs> this paracetamol and you know when they give paracetamol injection it's very painful and apparently it's supposed to be strong so I, I kept on calling them i said man this this um meds they're giving me is not working like my head is about to explode i need something stronger i need something to help me sleep 
I kept on complaining and complaining and complaining. She said, Don't worry, it's soon kicking. It's soon kicking. But nothing worked. So by morning, the doctor came again and then they said they were going to change my meds. So instead of so they're going to give me something stronger. So so they're not going to give me the, the um paracetamol anymore. I think they said they wanted to change it to to diclofenac. So they changed the meds to diclofenac as well and then they changed my drugs. So these were the drugs they gave me. So I was taking the flemil, flemil, amoxicillin. They gave me this at Pelon. They gave me um Loratidine. So this is the Loratidine. They gave me that. They gave me um I said I was uh, um into my take uh, so now when I was going home, they gave me ibuprofen. So I told them to take ibuprofen. I told me that's the egg. So they gave me this Omeg something. I can't really pronounce it, but they said I should take it before the uh, ibuprofen so that my tummy doesn't ache. Um, and then you know the ibuprofen as well. Let me check. Yeah, this is the ibuprofen that they gave me. So I was on that, uh, this is more loratidine. So I was on that for a few days, but I didn't get better, you know? So um, this was, so I think they admitted me on Monday. So I was in the hospital from Monday to Tuesday. Um, so I came back home, nothing was working. At this time, my mom had come to come and stay with us. And, you know, I was still in a lot of pain. I went back to the hospital. So they asked me to, to, to what, what did they even ask me to do? Um, they said, um, no, I, I went back against the hospital and said this time, you know, my throat started paining me and the pain was so bad. So they gave me strepsils and said, you know, just go back home, you know, this bacterial infection and take some time to like run its course or whatever. So like no problem. So that was on. I think I went back on Wednesday or Thursday. No, Thursday. I went back on Thursday because they told me my um, my results from the um, blood work and everything will come out and swabs and stuff like that will come out. But Thursday wasn't out, so they said I should come back on Friday. So Friday, I didn't bother going. I called in. They said it still wasn't out. So Saturday, I don't even know what today is. Saturday, I went back. To, to the hospital and by this time you know another doctor saw me this was at Palon and she was like mm, she's looking at my my blood work and stuff and she she my lucrophils or something something was low or something and it is the picture looks similar to the picture of somebody who has COVID that maybe that since all the drugs that they've given me now they, they said I should change to Cocodamo that you know it, it is a stronger painkiller so I'm like, okay, no problem. So sure, I should go and get tested for COVID. So I called the the um, Ikota Center, the center that's in Ikota, and you know, I'm like, oh, can I come now to come and get tested? And they're like, no, you can't come now. You have to um, book an appointment and I will we'll call you and let you know. Just send us a text with your details and then whenever there's space, we'll call you. But I was like, I can't leave my feet. I can't leave anything in the hands of this. So, so I um, I called one of my uncles and I said, please, you know any doctor that I need to do the COVID test? So he sent me a doctor's number and the doctor said he'll be in my house in, in a few minutes, in a few hours. So he came in the evening, he did the test for me and I found out that I was COVID-19 positive. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, so I've been sick this whole week going through excruciating pain and no one had told me in that time to get tested for COVID. They had been telling me, oh, it's a bacterial infection, blah, 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 blah. So eventually I had to, um, I had to call back Palon, call back Lifeline. So now I have, I've contacted Palon again to let them know what's happening and lifeline so that because obviously we've come in contact with the doctors there so that they know what's happening and they can also check themselves and 
if, if we're able to get extra care from them maybe so i did that and i have so i've so they asked me to buy few meds so in between because the soft food was so bad i had to buy these as well on my own and i had to buy a sleeping med which was recommended by one of the doctors i spoke to so this is what this was it i had to buy this so that i could help me sleep so past the end of this this part so obviously they've been giving me the wrong meds so now that um, I found out that I had COVID, so I told the doctors, first the doctor in Kelal even told me that I would be able to get medical care, um, a palliative or like a package of all the things you need, like the zinc and everything. But eventually he said, oh, I couldn't because I didn't get tested by NIMA or any of the confirmed places where I, where I could get tested. So I've had to go by myself with um to get my the drugs that are necessary to help with covid and it was recommended by one of the doctors that i spoke to so they asked me to buy zithromax so i've been i've been using that since yesterday i had to buy methodex by the way this drug when i when i take it it, it feels like i'm drinking fire like my throat like my own, my throat is so bad. So the symptoms I've been having are basically headaches, um, sore throat, really bad. I've never felt like I felt like slitting my wrist many, I've been my throat many times because the pain, you know, it's just here, it's so bad and it affects my ears and you know, my head and everything. So, but anytime I take this, no matter, even if it feels like fire, I feel, I'm more relieved after. I had to buy aboliki as well. This is the aboliki. I've had to put it in water to do like the steam inhalation thing. I've had to use magnesium and vitamin C. Um, I was also asked to buy um, chloroquine. So, so this is the chloroquine. So I use that as well, and then zinc too so this is the zinc this is the one i've been using this one so i've been using that over the last like over the last 24 hours and to be honest i don't feel like it's getting better so it seems like as if i've had maybe covid for for about a week now and i didn't know that you know i had it and thank god i've I've been home most of the time um, but what's so scary now is my mom came to stay with me while I had it like we slept on the same bed everything and she's obviously she's, she's older she's 56 so she has to you know self-isolate now and stuff I and mean, a few friends came to see me when I told them I was ill and I had like a bacterial infection obviously we didn't, nobody knew it was COVID so they came to see me obviously maintaining social distancing and stuff but you know the Nigerian healthcare system is 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 so crazy. Um, I've sent a message now to Neymar. Um, you know the online booking thing. I haven't heard back from them yet. Um, hopefully, I can get you know proper medical attention and all that. Anyway, bye guys. I'll keep you guys updated. I decided to do this video just so that um, when this is all over, I can share my experience with people. Um, all right bye hi so this is another day um i think today is the 8th of june and is i don't know i've been taking my meds um <clears throat> today i feel like I, I want to throw up but it's not coming out i think the diarrhea has reduced a little bit um so throat is still there the headaches is is there as well but i think it's connected to to the sore throat but i feel better um, so i think it's been nine days since i started feeling funny so hopefully <coughs> it's wearing 
wearing off. I still feel very dizzy. Um, I just finished the steam inhalation with the aboliki that I put in it. Um, I'm also trying to take the lemon, lemon and ginger tea. I also had communion today that was sent to me by one of my big sisters. So, yeah, just wanted to do an update and just see how this whole thing progresses. Um, hopefully it's progressing for good. I don't <clears throat> my I wasn't feeling this way yesterday, but I'm feeling like you know my my chest is a bit heavy, but it's better than how I felt yesterday. Because yesterday I had like really really horrible horrible sore throat, but I think it's like the sore throat is as if there's a pin here or two pins just holding my throat you know together to my inside so i can't even explain it but it's better today all right so i'll go and rest now because i've got all my strength you know to do this video all right bye guys yeah so today's the 13th of june um i i'm still feeling really dizzy i haven't done any videos because i've been really really tired i still post on instagram so you guys probably don't know what's going on you know behind the scenes but it's been a crazy couple of days um i posted something about my brother's remembrance on of his birthday um two days ago which was the 11th and you know i got so many messages from people who didn't even know I had a brother that passed on and all of that. But something crazier even happened after that. Um, in the evening, my stepsister died. And that was a, it was so crazy because I don't even understand how that happened, why it happened to happen on, on that day. And, I have COVID and I can't, I can't go anywhere. I can't go and see my sister because we share a sister. So that's how she's my sister. So um, well, that's how we're related. So my first sister and her are sisters and she died. Anyway, so I've not had it in me to do any videos or anything. It's just been crazy. Anyway, today I went to Naima and um, we couldn't do the test. So we got there. We got there quite late though. And there were a lot of people outside and they said they couldn't really attend to health workers that had been there so we couldn't go in but i also decided to go and see see my sister my big sister but i couldn't come down from the car um one man i stayed in the car and you know just went to say hello and just um it's been a crazy couple of days um i'm still feeling weak i don't i don't have the fever anymore i don't have the headaches but I can't do much. Um, yesterday I had a live session with Pastor Godman and in between I started feeling weak and dizzy but I, I stayed on till, till the end. I still feel really weak. I was supposed to have a masterclass today, um, the Global Opportunities Masterclass. But I had to cancel it as well because I wasn't feeling up to it. Um, I can't talk for more than an hour and that masterclass probably lasts about four hours and coupled with the fact that i don't have i'm not the right mind space because of um sister for me may i so rest in peace you know i was going to my own hospital i went a couple of times and i'm not trying to even badmouth anyone but i i went a couple of times i was going like every two days 
and they're telling me if i go back home you're fine there's nothing wrong with you you know you have a bacterial infection just take this meds and you'll be fine and no one told me to test for covid and you can imagine if i had an underlying issue or anything like that maybe i would have died god forbid maybe anything would have happened but nobody took it as serious there was so much pain body aches everything and everything i took wasn't working from paracetamol to ibuprofen to diclofenac to cocodamol nothing worked and no one said i should test for covid eventually um on on the last day someone the doctor said oh that my picture looks like the picture of someone who has covid that i should go and t get tested for covid and there was no one ready to test me so i had to get privately tested so you can imagine if I didn't get that. In fact, from the hospital, I called my friend in America who had it. And I started telling her how I was feeling. And she's like, yo, Ife, you have COVID. Because she, I, she was, I was feeling the exact same way she was feeling. But Nigeria is so crazy. We don't have the right systems in place. We don't have anything in place. People are dying every day and, and stuff, so. I just came back from Naima and I had a bit of energy even though I was feeling dizzy just walking up the stairs just now but I decided to give an update well, rest in peace sister for me Nigeria is ah <sighs> god help us imagine you wanting something all your life you actually finally get it and then you die before before you see your baby. Alright. So today is Monday, um, the 15th of of June. Um, it's Bam Bam's birthday. I can't go downstairs to see him. Um, although I caught a glimpse of him earlier. We went to Naima earlier today, so we did the test. It's been a crazy couple of days and Tibido died yesterday. May her soul rest in peace. Um, while I was out, like every time I'm, I'm at home, I feel like I'm getting better when I'm in bed and stuff because I don't do any strenuous activities. But anytime I go out, I still feel really, really extremely dizzy. Um, I couldn't stand up at night because we had to like line up and stuff. I couldn't stand up for more than like... 15 minutes i was tired i was dizzy i felt like throwing up i thought by today i would be 100 percent you know better but i'm still feeling really really dizzy so i just decided to do an update i just got back home i saw bam bam a little bit you know downstairs but i'm staying with him just wished him a happy birthday yeah so Hopefully the results from Nema will come out tomorrow. So today is the 18th of June. Um, yesterday night was horrible. Like I was laying in bed, I, was, I wasn't really doing much. And I just started feeling dizzy. Like my eyes were turning. I couldn't even look up. I couldn't look at my phone you know i was really feeling weak i had to call in the lab that please you know, come to. i actually thought i was you know going or something i don't even understand and it's funny because i already started feeling better and i don't know why i started feeling weak again and today i'm still feeling weak i don't know why but i spoke to my doctor and i'm so thankful for this doctor because I call him, I've never met him before, but he's, I've never met him before, but he's an HS tribe member's husband, and he has just been super amazing. I call him anytime, 12 midnight, 10 o'clock in the morning, anytime, and he picks up and he just advises me on what to do and stuff like that, and I'm super thankful for him you know that's the that's another important thing about community 
because if, if she wasn't a member of my community, I probably wouldn't have known her. I probably wouldn't have known that they had a hospital, that they're dealing with COVID patients or anything like that. So I, I called him, I said, I hope my situation is not, <sighs> sorry. I hope my situation is not getting worse. He said um, he doesn't think so, or he thinks he thinks my situation is getting better. And he asked me to buy folic acid in addition. So I bought this yesterday, and I've taken it. I've taken it today. I'm still feeling really weak. I don't know why. I just finished a session with AJS tribe members. We invited like a like an external speaker, and she came on. And it was, it was a good session, but I had to turn off the camera at some point because I was feeling dizzy and I needed to, you know, lay down. Anyway, so that's all for today. The dizziness and the tiredness is on another level, but I hope soon it will get better. Today is the 20th of June and it's been really crazy today. I've had, I felt very, very weak. And I thought that time had even passed, you know, with the, because it, I've been like this since the 1st of January. But I thought that time had passed where I'm still feeling weak and dizzy and all that. But this morning I started feeling so sick. I, like I wanted to come and use the bathroom and I was literally like, you know, I, it, I felt that my body was heavy, so I contacted contacted the doctor who has been helping me, and but he he told me that maybe my blood level is low and that we needed to check it. So he was going to send somebody, you know, to come and do my um, blood samples and stuff tomorrow. So the person will come tomorrow. But on the other hand, I also reached out to my doctor to tell her that I had COVID. So my real hospital told her that I had COVID and I had gotten the results from Naima. I sent her the results, but I didn't get a response from her. Maybe she's busy, maybe she's in a meeting. You know, doctors sometimes, they don't really check their phones and, and all that. But she hasn't responded to me yet. But I also called the hospital to see if I could speak to a doctor just because I was feeling dizzy and everything. And because my HMO and everything is with them, they have my records and stuff. So I called them, told them that, oh, I got the results and, you know, and stuff that um i just called to tell them so i think a few minutes later i got an email to say that the doctor was going to um like you no know, in fact i got the email from helium health to say um they were going i was going to have like a session or something like an online tele session and stuff so i waited it was supposed to be by two o'clock two o'clock came i was supposed to get another email with the link but the email never came until now i haven't heard from the doctor this is i think it's like it's past seven in the evening and i haven't heard anything from them and it's so painful because when you think about doctors these are people that are supposed to care for you they're supposed to help you out when you're ill and all that um, obviously not everybody doesn't help but this one has been i'm actually shook that i haven't heard back from them but i won't leave i won't give up i'll i'll call them after this call maybe i don't know anything would have happened and maybe that's why they haven't called me back but yeah i'm just waiting waiting here i feel a lot better now but earlier on i was i was it was scary but thank god all right so today's the 21st i feel like i have more energy today um the doctor also sent someone to come and do the blood test for me so they came this morning did the test and the results are out so my blood isn't low thank god so at least i'm fine but they said i had malaria from where to where like i don't understand what's going on from covid to malaria um i need to even do another covid test now to make sure that I'm much better, but I was still purging today. I've been purging since the 1st of June. I'm honestly tired. Um, I'm so thankful for people like um, Sister Aji um, from Cornerstone. She's been calling me to pray with me. Um, and today also called me, you know, to pray with me. She sent me communion. Like, I'm super thankful for those people. I know a lot of people don't know I have it. So obviously people cannot 
call me but the people that i know i'm super thankful like the support system has been amazing uh, my friend Devo also today you know he called me and he said i should buy this um apparently i think people at the isolation center they've been giving them it's called jubilee dietary supplement so it cannot do any bad to me anyway so i'm going to use it today and i'm just going to continue using it till i do another test for covid and it comes out negative so i tried to do makeup today see <laughs> but yeah hopefully you know it all stops like there's too much bad energy going on bad news um, one of my mentees passed on I, th um, I think saturday night till sunday morning her husband killed her and i just heard this morning so it's been it's been such a sad day and i just pray that you know all this just ends like i don't know what we did but god please just we're sorry this just needs to end since i've had covid there's so many people that have died so many people you know ill so many bad things happening but we're sorry god please just help us have mercy hello everyone um today i'm super excited um, i got my first negative results yesterday the 20 i think 27th but today's the 28th i'm um, super excited that you know i'm now free from corona um it was such a horrible 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 experience that you know i don't wish anyone to have um i still feel dizzy sometimes i still feel weak sometimes and all of that but i'm happy that it's gone um i just wanted to also um talk about the psychological um effect of corona as well a little bit i just wanted to touch on it a little bit um you know um this whole time you know it didn't click to me that i actually probably had my bath maybe three times in the whole of june um, I didn't even realize that that was what was happening. I was, I was literally just waking up, sleeping whenever, you know, it was evening or like, I didn't even know what day was what. Like, it was so bad. There was a day I even felt like hitting my head on the wall just so that I could feel pain or just feel myself. Um, there was a day when I started feeling like I wish I was in the isolation center. Maybe I would have felt better just by seeing people and all that. But my husband didn't want me to go to the isolation center for, you know, for some other reasons as well. He felt that it was better for me to just be at home since I had the care from um, two of the doctors who were talking to me. So Dr. Aya and Dr. Kayode, you know. So it was really, really horrible. Like, I felt like, like, you know, there were days when I thought I was dying. Like, the day where I was just in bed. You know, I was on my phone, I wasn't even doing anything strenuous and then my eyes started rolling and going back. I had to call, you know, my husband to tell him that, you know, I don't know what's going on. I couldn't even really talk. I started crying. He was even confused. Ah, why are you crying? You know, so the psychological effect of COVID is even is it's almost as bad as the pain, you know, that you go through and you know when you're hearing people dying every day, like this person was here yesterday, this person is not here anymore. You know, you're wondering when is it going to be my turn or is it going to be my turn or you know was this person okay how did the person go into coma you know any any little pain i felt in my chest in my back in my ribs you know i started feeling like ah you know are my lungs filling up you know all the things you read online so i think it's important for people to really really be educated about these things have doctors i'm happy to give out the doctors numbers who have helped me through this journey because i know that with the um, you know private hospitals and even some government hospitals um, they're not really treating covid patients so and they're also overwhelmed so it's not even really their fault so i would, I would um seek their own um, opinion and ask them if it's okay if i can drop their details just so that um, people can get the help that they need because you know that support you know just because the doctors told me okay if your case is not progressing i think you're okay you know i think you're fine 
and all that and in some some and sometimes when i felt like it was i wasn't really fine you know they sent me someone to you know come and do like another test just to determine what was really going on so that made me feel more at rest so um that psychological effect and my own because it lasted so long almost a month you know it really really dealt with me i thought i was fine because you know i was you know talking to people but i wasn't you know so thank god i really thank god for everyone who came through for me this season um, my husband really really tried i really pitied him because it wasn't funny just seeing seeing me in that you know situation and all of that um you know him you know every medicine anybody was calling him to tell him okay go and buy you know middle of the night go and buy this go and buy that you know he was really really you know there and you know really trying to like give all the help that he could you know my mom you know coming to stay with me um during this season when especially because we didn't even know that it was corona but even when we found out that it was corona she still came because my husband reported me to her that i wasn't drinking the ginger tea <laughs> you know so she came you know she was even angry that i want to die like you know that would make me cry again i don't want to die like i don't want to die so <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was it was really crazy. But I really thank God. My sister, just before my other sister died, you know, she she sent me food. We didn't even know what was coming, you know. Everybody just really really came through. Doctor T, you know, he was one who sent me the doctor and stuff. Like everybody, like so many people came through, um, you know, prayers and and stuff. So. Thank God, thank God I'm fine. This month was horrible, even apart from the fact that I had COVID, you know, people that had died, you know, that I, I, I knew or I once had a relationship with, like friendship or whatever, like it was really, really horrible. Who have helped me in some way. You know, this month was really, really horrible, but I thank God that, you know, COVID is over and I survived it. And by the grace of God, it wouldn't have any adverse effect on me or my blood and you see all your blood thickens and stuff like that. I I am, you know, really hopeful that, you know, none of that happened, especially because I didn't really have the lungs um, issue. Like I didn't have um, breathing, any, any bad breathing um, issues and all of that. But yeah, I just wanted people to just know how you know covid really takes a toll on you and you don't really really realize realize what really happens so people if you if just stay safe stay home if you don't have anything to go and look for outside you know just stay at home i stay at home you know if i don't have anything important to do um, but there's some things that i have to do like you know over the last couple of days i've had to go and see you know lambda's family and so i think those are really important things to do and it's not that the family really really needs support and stuff but yeah please just stay at home stay safe